Welcome to Nuked Radio. This is episode 28. Today is Thursday, May the 3rd. And with us today, back by popular demand, is Kevin Blanche. Kevin's going to help us run down some news stories and uh, give us his take on some uh, some recent uh, news that has come out about UN intervention. TEPCO has admitted in the last two days that the fog we've been seeing around the reactors on the TEPCO cameras is radioactive. And then this is something that people who have been watching the cameras have been uh, postulating about for the past 13 months. It seems to be a lot worse at night, but of course that's when the temperatures are cooler. And because of its location on the ocean, um, we were assuming that some of those things might have been fog events. But Fukushima Diary ran a story yesterday. Um, Oshiodori Mako talked at the Osaka Bar Association when she asked TEPCO, we see gas coming out from Fukushima plants at night. It looks like smoke. What is that? TEPCO replied, it's water vapor. She asked them again, is it radioactive? And they answered, yes, it comes out in the daytime and the nighttime. Certain times it's more obvious when it, when it's smoky, it actually looks colored, yellow or brown, but they put some filters over the cameras a few months ago, which prevents some of the little um, neutron beam events or CCD interactions on the cameras from showing up, which people had been watching closely. Also, we are getting some press from a celebrity who has taken on our cause. Joe Rogan from Fear Factor actually tweeted the article that I wrote for End the Lie about Fukushima falling apart. He was interviewed yesterday and said, it's terrifying that they are building things that they don't know how to shut off. Our entire civilization runs on this insanity. Now, I messaged him today on Facebook, told him I wrote that article. I'd love to get him on the show. We have some ideas about getting this to go mainstream, but we need his help. So far, he's the only celebrity that I know of who's picked up on this. I also sent him links to the Radchick page and a new page that I created today called Fukushima Falling Apart. Are you ready? And what we're going to discuss on that page is just worst case scenario situation, sheltering in and so forth. So check that page out. I also started another Facebook page called Farming in Fallout. And I'm part of a group on Facebook called Our Food Chain. And there's been a lot of interest about some of the stuff I've been posting on there about the cows in Hawaii being fed boron and some of the levels that have been detected in milk and so forth. Those numbers are going up, as been reported by UC Berkeley. So I'll be posting those articles on there. Some of them are up already. Check out that page also. And please forward it to anyone that you know who is in the farming industry or grows their own produce, or works in grocery stores, because we really need to get the grocery stores starting to check produce. And I've said this on the the show before, every time you go in to the grocery store, ask them if they're testing for radiation. Just in the past week, 422 to 428, we've had 36,086 people who have been reached by people reposting stuff from the Radchick page, Please continue to do that. The forecasts seem to be getting a lot of people's attention. And I want to talk about that briefly because uh, in my area today, it's about 80, really humid. We've got some rain moving in. There's also rain going on uh, down south in Mississippi and Florida and, of course, the Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, which will be moving into Montana. Looks like Salt Lake City and Nevada is getting some, too, and Northern California. Some of the recent spikes that we've been seeing have been really high. And as the people from Radiation Watch had posted a few days ago, they've seen some of the highest spikes in the past eight months. I know just last night I went to my kids' elementary school a few miles from my house. I found 17 or 18 mutated dandelions, big ones. There was a softball game going on there with a bunch of little kids, and there's kids laying all over the grass and playing, and people have their dogs there. And 
I went around with some of the dandelions and I asked some of the kids, hey, have you guys seen these at your house? And almost every one of them said, yeah, I've got those in my backyard. So I told them not to touch them. And I want to tell people that too. I've noticed when I've been uh, picking some of those dandelions and other people have remarked also that we get really uh, a lot of stinging in our eyes. So don't touch them unless you have gloves. It's probably better just to take high resolution photographs or video. If you upload the video to YouTube, make sure you put mutations in the title and the area of the country that you're located in and which country you're located in. And there's some people who have been sending me like numerous videos from the same city. Um, at every place that they're stopping to check, they're finding these things. What I need you to do now is go to schools, daycares, churches, Check their parking lots, check the playgrounds, and if you find mutations, make sure you put the name of the place in the title and send it to that school. A lot of schools have Facebook pages. You can post it right on their page to get them interested in this, too. Kevin, thank you so much for coming back on the show. You put out a great video yesterday. I mean, all your videos are great and very inspiring, but you talked about the um the story of recent uh, UN UN intervention request Japan government immediately to ask the UN for help with spent fuel pool number 4 become before it becomes too late a lot of places are picking up on this story right now yeah and the story's been out for a long time and anybody with a logical brain you know including you you know there's been plenty of us have reported exactly this for a long time but when it Finally, the people who have been militant and in denial and have been the liars, when the liars themselves come out and start asking for help, especially when the dynamic is the Japanese dynamic in that obedient culture, I think people realize the Japanese mentality. This is a perfect storm over there. I, I grew up and went to college with so many of these Japanese brilliant young people, and I understand how obedient that society is. For them, for a Japanese person to come out and say, I am wrong, is, you know, it's, it, it's something we can't comprehend here. And when they, I see that article finally come out, and it is the Japanese people, it is the scientists, it is the people from TEPCO finally asking for help, that it just puts it into context what dire straits it is yeah and it's it's no longer a japanese issue which a lot of people have been under the impression even some of our uh, government advisors and agencies have deferred to it being japan's problem but it's yeah, an it's international not. issue all nuclear is international it knows no borders it knows no flags any nuclear issue has nothing to do with this you know uh, uh, borders or countries or flags and this one, you know, is just like the rest of them. doesn't matter where a power plant is built. doesn't matter where a bomb goes off. We're all down winders. It is a human event. You know, I himself, Sokolov himself said, we will pay the price two or three generations later. Oppenheimer said it. They all said it. Well, we're two or three generations removed, and we have it. We have Chernobyl in us. We have the Nevada test site in us. We have benzene in our water supply well here you go fukushima putting us over the top i really believe that's where my cancer came from you know i and i've read and read and read and you know i tell everybody this is baptism by fire now i'm not a commentator you know this isn't commentary this is documentary now i'm in the, probably the number one leukemia treatment center in the world and i see it there's young females all over in there and this disease never happened to young females it's up 1,600% in the last decade. Fukushima's pushing us over the top. Our bodies can take it. Yeah, and, and females are more profoundly affected health-wise from yes. radiation than males. Absolutely. Absolutely. And see, any mammal, any, you know, milk lactosing mammal is the number one that will affect quickly. You know, and yeah, it affects them the hardest. And we're starting to see it affecting... And welcome back to Nuked Radio. Um, we just lost Kevin, so uh, we're hoping he'll call back. I'm going to read this article about the UN from Kyoto, Japan. On the 30th of April, 72 Japanese NGO organizations, led by uh, Mr. Tamari and Green Action Group, 
sends an urgent request to the UN and Japanese government urging immediate action to stabilize the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant Unit 2 spent nuclear fuel pool. The letter was endorsed by experts from Japan and abroad. The letter warned that the seriously damaged Unit 4 spent fuel pool contains cesium-137 that is equivalent to 10 times the amount released at the time of the Chernobyl nuclear accident. If an earthquake or other event were to cause this pool to drain, this could result in a catastrophic radiological fire. You know, the, the problem that I have with this, too, is this kind of uh, minimizes the effect. They are just talking about cesium-137 being equivalent to 10 times the amount released at Chernobyl. That's just one isotope. There's 1,600 isotopes that come out of nuclear fuel. So are all those 1,600 10 times the equivalent of Chernobyl? The letter urged the United Nations to organize a nuclear security summit to take up the crucial problem of the Fukushima Daiichi unit for spent fuel pool, the letter stated that the United Nations should establish an independent assessment team and coordinate international assistance in order to stabilize the pool and prevent further radiological consequences with potentially catastrophic consequences. Letters were sent to both UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon and Prime Minister Yoshi Hiko Noda, the letter asking that Japan ask immediately for the UN's help. Nearly all of the 10,893 spent fuel assemblies at the plant sit in pools vulnerable to future earthquakes with roughly 80 ti 85 times more long-lived radioactivity than released at Chernobyl. So they're saying 85. And then uh, Mr. Tamari said it's no longer a Japanese issue, but an international issue it is imperative for the Japanese government and the international community to work together on this crisis before it becomes too late. And some of the comments that I saw being made by other people when Senator Wyden put out his alert was that it's Japan's problem. It is not Japan's problem. It is everybody's problem. Yes. Do we have Kevin back? We do not, not yet. Okay. Also posted on any news, May 2nd, world leader in decommissioning reactors. There is no technology which may be directly applied at Fukushima, which all of us who've been following the story already know. Recently, executives of Energy Solutions, the global leader in the field of treatment and disposal of radioactive waste, accepted an interview with the Denki Shinbaum and expressed their intention to expand their cooperative relationships with Japanese companies in the reactor decommissioning business in Japan. Having Hello. already established... Hi, Kevin. Hi. Just reading this article here on AA News about uh, not having technology to deal with the problem. I'd rather talk to you, though. What, uh -huh. do, what kind of equipment is going to be basically needed to decommission the reactors? Do you know, are we looking at hydraulics here? I know they well, need a crane. Well, crane. you know, the United States military has a warship. It has a battle carrier that is specifically for nothing but this. The, the military, the United States military has the ability and has the technology to contain this monster. Now, if it would have been contained early on, it would have been a massive undertaking. It's going to be such a massive undertaking now. You know, the Japanese government comes out and says we're going to build an 80, you know, TEPCO is building an 80-foot containment wall now underground. That is their plan that they say they're going to. But it has to be domed underground and above ground now. It has to be contained. We have fission going on for all this time. God only knows how deep the fission has went into the ground, but my guess is it's very, very deep, you know, and it's going to have to be the containment dome. Is, we're talking, <laughs> we're talking, you know, a major, 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 massive, you know, project of epic proportions. Right. 
Right, and I, and I read an article a few months ago saying that um, some, some researchers estimated that that corium, when it was at between 3,000 and 5,000 degrees, I mean, who knows what it is now because no one can get near it, could burn through 18 inches of concrete per hour. Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, if you read anybody, you know, people say, oh, China Syndrome, China Syndrome. China Syndrome is nothing more than a word for fission that was contemporized in the movie in 1979. And the movie actually is pretty damn accurate on what fission does. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be turned off. Once it's turned on, there is no turn. There's no technology in the world to stop it. It has to be contained. It has to be domed. And they've let it go for 400 days, which is the biggest crimes against humanity in the history of the world. And so how deep is it? Uh, <laughs> you know, the hypothesis on China Syndrome, the word China Syndrome comes from Three Mile Island. If it burns all the way down, it'll finally burn all the way through the earth and come out in China. That's how the word evolved. You know, so where does it stop? And, you know, people think, oh, it's underground. It's next to the Pacific. Oh, that big old Pacific will just dilute it down. People have in their minds, they think that nuclear fallout is pollution. It is not pollution. You know, I, I, I heard a CNN analyst say, the solution to pollution is dilution on this. And I'm like, it's not pollution, you morons. It is nuclear fallout. It never goes away. 24,000-year half-life. So <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but as far as what I read, the plan to go in there contain is not going to do anything. They have no plan. That's the problem. They are blindly, it just proves by law, by law, international law, the IEA by law has to have a plan. These are international law treaties that are in place. That's why there's going to be so much litigation fly on this, that they have to have a plan. And it just shows you what a lie the nuclear industry is. They have no plan when by law they have to have a plan, and they promised us for years that they did have a plan. They have no plan. Uh -huh. So my guess is it will never be contained. I, I, I don't think it will ever be contained. I really don't. And I think it'll be the gift that just keeps on giving for generations. Right. It's going right. to be a whole at new the, dynamic in America. At, at the very the least, we, we have to adapt. You know, and, and that's the problem. The and I hear this all the time from doctors, from scientists. You know, and I, this is the debate that I've been having for 20 years with people. Can the human species adapt to nuclear fallout? There's been plenty of studies, including Richard Miller, who spent his entire life, as I look out my hospital, we'll write at his office, that says the human body cannot adapt. Einstein said it cannot adapt. Oppenheimer said it could not adapt. All the people in the know said the human body, they don't believe, can adapt. And that's the only hope. And that has to, so I think that you're going to see a major industry pop up in the food chain. That's our only hope is education will become more prevalent in the food chain and people will have to try to bolster their own immune systems. You know, yeah. there is no answer. There is no answer. And answers are going to have to be created because we can see that the genie is out of the bottle. And we can see that it is the IEA, the nuclear regular agencies, the governments, the so-called experts. You know, and people like Arnie Gunderson and these guys who are, these guys really piss me off. I'd like to knock him out. I honestly would. He supported this industry for years and pocketed millions of dollars in his pocket for years. I, I saved all the emails. For two months when I was reporting this thing was a catastrophic nightmare and was going crazy about it, these people, the IEA's representatives, Gunderson himself, come out to me and would argue with me and tell me I didn't know a hydrogen blast from a nuclear infected blast. And so he is an opportunist. We are back with Kevin Blanche. Also, we have a new phone system we'd like to test out, so we are going to take calls. Kevin said he'd be happy to talk to our listeners. Uh, John Stokes, who has a show on After Mine on Orion, wanted us to ask Kevin what he thinks about the theory of a hydrovolcanic explosion. And I was just looking up here exactly what that is by definition. It's generated by the interaction of magma with either groundwater or surface water. Explosive hydrovolcanic er eruptions of balsitic lava are sometimes called Sertsian after the eruption off Iceland in 1963. The largest hydrovolcanic explosion that I know of was Krakatoa. 
Kevin, how likely is that scenario with what's going on, or should that have happened already if it was going to? No, 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 no. It's very, very likely, and I'll tell you when you're going to see it. It could be going on right now. You know, we I don't really don't know exactly how deep the Pacific is right next to the plant, but as soon as we start to see steam rising off that water, when you have an explosion like that, when it hits the water, it won't, you know, it's not going to erupt up out of the water. It's not going to, you're going to see steam coming off that freaking water. You know, that scenario still goes on in a natural phenomena in Hawaii, you know, and there's been plenty of cameras down there to film it, what goes on. I'm not so sure it probably isn't manifesting itself right now. I think it's extremely likely. I think it's only a matter of time. So it starts to, you know, boil down and meet some kind of, I don't know what the geology is underneath those plants and how deep, but as sooner or later, it's going to hit the, the elements that are going to cause that. And it's going to, you'll start to see steam rise up off the Pacific. That's what it'll be. And it'll be going on. And now how intense? God only knows. This is science fiction land. This is all new, uncharted territory. Scientists don't know. The best geologists in the world couldn't give you an answer. But my guess is that scenario is extremely likely. Just looking at some of the pictures online of what l the crater looks like afterward, too. I mean, if we ended up with a huge crater there and the corium is still in the ground... Even one of those blobs, you know, we could have like a radioactive tea bag off the coast where the ocean water rushes in. Well, we already have out. that, and I think it's I think it's really important for people to understand this. When they think that it's pouring into the Pacific, which it's been pouring into the Pacific for over 400 days now, that that it doesn't mean it's safer than going in the water. It's not. It's not. The Massachusetts Institution reef barriers were 4,000 miles out. That's it came out last month. And in their words, they say, pockets of organisms and fish thousands of times over the limits. Mm -hmm. So it's already going on. The Pacific is being contaminated. The Pacific is contaminated. It's the world's biggest food basket. It's happening now. It's been happening the whole time. So the eruption will just exponentially make it worse, but it's on now, in the here and now. And we're not even testing salmon as it comes into this country. No, so, we're not. You know, and, and you don't know. A U.S. seafood provider uh, testing for Fukushima contamination, so there's a growing concern for radiation affecting the nation's seafood. Trace amounts may have been present in rare cases, like from peak fallout and all the testing that we've done on atolls and so forth. Sure. But uh, now, yeah, they're, they're seeing levels that are hundreds and even thousand times higher than what they would expect to see from those peak testing levels. Well, that's it. That's the whole thing. So you go out and you do a test, and so you get a basket. You know, you get a net full of fish, and maybe it's in an area because you know it. The, the way the ocean currents work, it's the same as the jet stream. It's going to, you know, accumulate into a certain spot. Well, you're going to get nets of fish that aren't contaminated, but then you're going to get nets of fish that are thousands, if not millions of times, and there's no way to differentiate that's one from the other. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just, there's no difference to the jet stream and the ocean current. You know, it's just like the debris field coming in here. Well, same thing with the radiation. As it's pushing that water via temperature, via components, is going to accumulate in certain areas, and it's going to affect certain pockets of fish first. You know, and the more and more it goes on, it's going to contaminate more and more areas. You know, and then the water rises up off the ocean. You know, here we go, you know. And what is being covered, you know, there was a story that came out like two or three days ago about a Harley Davidson that washed up in B.C. Yeah, I saw that. And they, they did this like feel-good story about how Harley Davidson traced the VIN number back to the owner in Japan and yeah. the two guys want to meet and all this. But nobody tested the dang thing to see if it was radioactive or not. And if they yeah. did, they didn't put it in their report. Now, I'm getting yeah. emails from people saying the stuff that's washing ashore is radioactive. Of course and it's going to be. It's naive. To, it's pure ignorance to think it would not be. Right. You know, now parts of it are not going to be, and parts of it are going to be. But how do you tell one pile of debris? This pile of debris is so gargantuous, massive. How do you tell? Oh, this spot doesn't have any, so they'll jump all over that. When this spot over here might be thousands of times. You know, there's no differentiating it. So it, it's not even ignorant to think that parts of it are not going to be contaminated. You know, as yeah. the water was contaminated, this thing started leaching into the Pacific as soon as they started pushing that water on. And how soon did they start spraying? I mean, you think about, 
You, you think about the house of cards that nuclear energy has been built on when you watch those clowns dropping the freaking helicopter buckets and spraying hose waters. It proves to you they have no plan. They have no clue. All they've done is suck up money. The IEA should be tried in the Hague. Every one of those IEA should be in prison. Every one of those people should be in prison. They are the culprit. They're the liars. They're the liars that perforated this lie. They told 4,000 people killed in Chernobyl. They, that many die a month in Chernobyl. 20,000 of the 50,000 men who entombed Chernobyl are already dead, and the other 30,000 are dying. It is pure ignorance. The little girl who died in the hospital where I'm at from Chernobyl was born after Chernobyl in the Ukraine. The Ukraine. There are droves of young females dying in the Ukraine to this day that are hundreds of miles away from the Chernobyl plant. Yeah, and the, the allowances in food there are much lower than what they're allowing in Japan. It's 37 becquerels per kilogram, and little kids that are eating that food have the GI tracts of 70-year-olds. That's what the doctors say about that. Absolutely. They're very unhealthy, and that's considered a, a low dose. 37 Becquerels, you know, Japan is, is allowing like 100 Becquerels. Again, there you go with the Japanese culture trying to, you know, not for a family to come out and say, admit it. You know, this, if you're a TEPCO executive or anything, the Japanese culture expects you to commit Harry Carey. That's the Japanese culture. I have plenty of friends over there. I have plenty of media that I went to college. That culture still exists to these days. These young girls that I went to college with who are absolutely brilliant. You know, I remember Makata, my friend, she says, if my dad even knew I talked to you, he would disown me. They would go from the dorms to the house. They're extremely obedient. And for someone to perpetrate this on the people and come out and admit it, it's put shame on the entire family. And they're, so they're going to deny, 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 raise limits. Oh, you know, it's just their culture, the way they are. And the rest of the world's going to pay the price because of that culture. Yeah. You know, and here we sit back as the U.N., well, well, not even the U.N., the, the contemporized media. You know, they're supposed to be our fourth branch of government. They're supposed to protect us. That's the way, you know, that's why America has had over the years, and it's been kidnapped before. But what's happened to our news sources and our media source, they are to blame. When a guy like Sanjay Gupta, who was nominated for the attorney general job, who spends million dollars creating credibility with that man, comes on his two weeks on March 25th. He did his morning health show that millions watch. He has number one selling book book, and he shows people fishing at Lake Chernobyl. Fact, Lake Chernobyl has 20-foot, 25-foot catfish in it right now because nothing has spawned for 25 years in that lake. Yeah, you go fishing in that. I love that commentary. You know, he should be in prison for that. CNN's executive boards, I, I fully intend to sue them one day if I come up with money. That, that is the problem here, is popular opinion and the lies has been knocked down. So it's been able to perforate itself for 400 plus days. When a popular opinion rolls up and demanded something be done, something would have been done. Yeah, New I York Times that, actually ran an article yesterday, radiation in small doses could actually be disproportionately worse, says report. Doses spread out over time might be more dangerous than doses given out all at once. Renewed absolutely. importance after Fukushima. It's really important that people that are following these stories, when you see someone like the New York Times run a story like this, that you go to that story and you comment. And yes, you tell absolutely. them what's really going on, not just for the New York Times to see, but for the people going to that article and reading the comments. You don't see that. Well, and direct them to this, and direct them to YouTube, and direct them to pages that are devoting time to this so, so people can catch on. Yeah, the ignorance of this whole scenario is that, oh, somehow you get sick within radiation poison and you get burns on your body. Yeah, it's not a fallacy. Again, Oppenheimer, Einstein, Sokolov, all of them said the same thing. The people who invented this thing, they know this thing. We will pay the... And we are back with Kevin Blanche from YouTube. And uh, I've been telling people listening to the show as far as mitigation goes, treat yourself like you already have cancer. And I wanted to ask Kevin, what is the status of your cancer right now, and what are you doing diet-wise? I was lucky enough to get into this incredible leukemia center, which is cutting edge, could be the best in the country, and we just by default, and I had a little bit of money, and I had to sell it all to get in the door. 
that, uh, you know, it's wiped me out. But I, I knew about diet before, but now it's baptism by fire. You have to keep that immune system strong, and you're exactly right. Eat and treat yourself like you have cancer now. And it's the same old thesis. You know, I'm working with a world-class dietitian, you know, cutting edge. I have a book that was written by, I'll, I'll post it online. Uh, in fact, I'll put it up that uh, these doctors, leukemia doctors, and with their own recipes in there. And it's, again, it's fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. You know, and there's debate out there whether it can be from the extract on a, you know, juicer. Or, and I think the juice. The juicers are right on a lot of things. I think they're right on a lot of things. But eating the fresh vegetables and the fresh roots, I actually get injections, you know, through the hospital. You know, they break my blood down so dynamic. I have a pick line hanging through my chest, you know, so they break it down and they give me, you know, shots of vitamin C extract and lots of things. But I'm I'm on the blackberries right now. (laughs) I eat a lot of freaking dark purple fruit, you know, especially as a man. You know, at my age, going through this, and I think you really have to concentrate on your health and try to be strong. But the sad thing about this disease, you know, there's a world-class triathlete in there dying right now. The guy who won the Ironman died in that hospital two years ago. You can be the healthiest person in the freaking world, and if this thing wants to get you, it's going to get you. Yeah. So all you can do is try to bolster that immune system. I've read everything there is to read. You know, and. What other things are you doing in terms of vitamins? You said they were giving you vitamin C extract. Uh, what about like B vitamins and things like that? I take a yes. I take a multiple vitamin every day, and I try. They want you getting the vitamins through your diet. You know, I couldn't eat for a long time. I was on a bag. I, I got down to 129 pounds. I came so close to dying. My tum- my cancer actually presented itself in tumors, which is so abstract, rare. It only happens one in 1,500 cases. I was all but dead when I got in there, so these tumors wrapped around my mouth. So I went without food for and water for a couple months. So when I got back onto it, you know, you want to go and just eat the regular stuff. But, and you need to get plenty of protein in your life, body. You need to get plenty because you need to be strong in case something like this happens so you can fight. But they, the B12 vitamins, the extracts, they want them in you. You know, and they want to break them down and bolster them up, but they want them through food. You know, all the studies show they want them through food and become your lifestyle every day versus, you know, loading up on something. So I think it's important that it's what you eat, Uh you know. You know, I've got Michael Pollan's book right here. (laughs) First thing when I got sick, my daughter, you know, who lives in Manhattan, it's, you know, the designer, and... I have his book, his book too, and I've it. recommended it on, on air. He, it's a wonderful book, and I don't recall the title at the moment. In Defense of it's, Food? Yeah, Immobiliance Dilemma. Okay, that's it's, another one. Yeah, I read that book yeah, that's years the book ago. That, that's the book that I like, you know, about the food chain, about the food. But he's on it. He's on it. You know, and there's been some creative, dynamic things done through treatment of leukemia. You know, and I have a pretty interesting theory on my leukemia and I have I have maybe the most world class my uncle's an incredible world class uh, neurosurgeon I've run this by him and you know and the two, two of the doctors I have are geniuses and I've run my theory is this that my father was nuked to death in Nevada test that he was radiated he was a human guinea pig drafted marine put a ground zero I was conceived later I think my body has been fighting off leukemia from birth or radiation, his chromosome, and I think that's why it formed in tumors outside my bone marrow, which only happens one in 1,500 cases. So you ran both these guys said that is a, I think maybe that's something that needs to be explored, and maybe there's a lot of people that get tumors in their body, and they don't realize they're caused by radiation, and the doctor misdiagnoses them, which is a common, the pathologist misdiagnoses them. They have surgery, and the surgery kills them. I think it happens to thousands, and I know what happens. It almost happened to me. You know, I refused the surgery, or I'd be dead right now. I said, no, you're not doing that to me, and I dug in. And believe it or not, I found a video on YouTube by a pathologist at Cedar Cyanide, and he's the one that showed me that they can get this pathology report wrong, and sure as shit, I had this brilliant doctor named Dr. Hansen, old oncologist, who grew up in southern Utah, half his family dead at, by 30, and he says we're all down, and he's the one that saved my life 
this exposure to radiation does a lot of crazy things to the human body. But the bottom line, it causes cancer. And I believe autism. We have the highest autism rate in the world here, one in 44. You know, it's just a theory of mine. My, my theory is exposure. Utah has very lax environmental laws for 30 years, plus the open-air test raining next door to Nevada. You know, we have one in 44 autism right here. Why? Why? The kids are getting no more vaccinated here than they are in New York or Michigan or Florida. Why is that so high? My theory is environmental poisoning, radiation in the gene pool. You I know, really Kevin, believe I wanted, it to be true. I wanted to ask you your take, too, on this uh, NATO summit situation in Chicago, putting into mm-hmm. effect all of these uh, evacuation plans and so forth and talking about dirty bombs. And Obama came out on March 27th and said... There are still too many bad actors in search of these dangerous materials, and these materials are vulnerable in too many places. What he's talking about is like the construction cameras that have cesium chips in it that have been going missing. It would not take much, just a handful or so of these materials, to kill thousands and thousands of innocent people. So now all of a sudden he's all worried about a handful of cesium saying how dangerous it is. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a smoke screen. It's like, let's go bomb Iran. They're building a freaking nuclear bomb, and we got a nuclear bomb going off right now, Fukushima. It is a freaking joke. Let's get real about nuclear fallout. I mean, the House of Cards, the Nevada test site, 300 bombs set off out there from 1951 to 96, open air, underground to 93. Chernobyl. Chernobyl... The real radiation, the real nuclear bomb that we are in threat of is happening right under our nose, Fukushima. It is on. It is happening. These dirty bomb threats, this freaking nuclear bomb threat. Why would a country use a nuclear bomb on another country and commit suicide? It's not going to happen. It's the nuclear industry. You know, the Germans have backed out of theirs. They turned them off. Japan's turned their, I don't think Japan will ever see one of theirs turned back on. You know, there's a debate. I don't think it's going to happen. I think that, and we're trying to build blue castle here. These backs are freaking morons, you know. So the contemporized media, the contemporized politician, you know, they like it just the way it is. It, it is the one percent thesis, you know. They they want to keep things. It's all a smoke screen when they don't want to talk about the environment. As we destroy the environment, we destroy ourselves. It is the socioeconomic dynamic going forward. The only one that matters. The only one. And it's on. It's happening right here, right now. And for God, I, it's beyond me why it is not talked about in, you know, summits, in, you know, universities, in media. I, I, I'm blown away by it. One, of, one just, of the, there's a mainstream article that just hit The Economist. Japan is without nuclear power for first time in 50 years. A silent majority speaks. You guys need to go to that article and comment on why it needs to stay that way. Kevin, what are some of the websites that you follow for news about Fukushima and about the radiation levels? Well, uh, there's some great ones on Facebook have been created. Uh, 311 Watchdogs, she does great work. You know, there's yep. some on my Facebook, you know, in there that I post a few that Facebook. It's hard to sift through it. The Times of India, believe it or not, they do great work. You know, and it's a small YouTube site. You know, I find most of my information through foreign media outlets. Surely don't find them here. And there's some underground, grassroots organizations in Japan. And they have to be quiet about it, you know. They, they're doing the, the article that broke yesterday on that news was, you know, I posted that article all over by uh, Japan Green. And it's leaking out the mainstream media squashes it even google and freaking yahoo have squashed it Uh you know so you really have to dig and it's foreign outlets that are reporting these you know the times of india broke the freaking most of this major news before you know they do a great job that's a guy from manhattan who went over there and started that paper and they have an online youtube site nobody registers to it but there's stuff's out there you know in written form but yeah, you really think, have to dig in. I think they were one of the four uh, places that reported when Japan agreed to enrich uranium for Iran a couple years ago. 
Yeah, and they're also the ones that reported that when the money, you know, Bush, we're going to trace the money in 9-11. I was a derivative trader then. Oh, we're going to trace it, and then they don't trace it. Well, the time the India broke right down, and their article's right on they traced it right to Pakistan, or right where Bin Laden was at, right with the thing, and they reported that years ago. And it was the Times of India. You know, and our contemporized media here is a joke. Kevin, what's the status of your cancer right now? Well, leukemia is an oddball thing. You know, it's in remission, which is great news. But the whole thing is, is it just likes to rear right back up. So. I have to be extremely militant. Like I said, it's destroyed me. You know, leukemia patients, people don't realize for three years of their lives, do nothing but fight cancer 24-7. Yeah.